this whole paradigm that I was referring to are also uh, land titling uh, programs. Uh, land titling programs a la Hernando de Soto, the mystery of capital type of programs, which for those who are not familiar uh, with this policy, the basic uh, assumption that Hernando de Soto uh, presents in his book and has very influential on land policies adopted in many, many countries was that um, uh, low-income communities uh, that involved in self-built informal settlements, they, uh, they, if they transform their uh, effort to build their house into an asset, then they can uh, be part of the economic system and then they can use that in order to raise more money, to leverage, to have credit, and then to be very uh, rich. In practice, the programs, land titling programs, are clearly, uh, and, and the idea of land titling programs is just uh, doing a decree, transforming uh, whatever tenure arrangement exists into private property registered in somebody's name, which is absolutely perfect to transform that territories that in a way were under control of low-income communities to open ground for uh, a new frontier for business development. So part of, of, of uh, the land titling and the land reforms that has been implemented has to do with that. Finally, just not to finish with this very catastrophic <laughs> picture. Uh, I think that, of course, my main argument here is how much land policy is crucial, absolutely crucial, how much land policy is related to uh, the overall new liberal global free flux of uh, capital surplus and how much communities all over, both in urban and in rural areas, has been more and more vulnerable uh, and made vulnerable uh, because of that. So just not to finish with this, but opening ground for what should be the counter effort to that. So I have to say that the movement for the right to adequate housing or uh, taking the idea that housing is a human right, the movements of the right to the city, the movement uh, of all, all the groups that are resisting to this displacement, that are trying to connect to each other in order to say, no, don't, don't take out our land. Uh, this land be belongs to us. It's a very important counter movement to that. And so it's very important uh, at that point that this uh, movement, this, this tendency, uh, which we can see here and there all over the places, in many different places, it's very, which is, it's a very local resistance. It's a very city by city, neighborhood by neighborhood resistance. It's very important that this resistance becomes global. So my main point here is that the whole movement that is provoking ma massive displacement all over the world is global, is international. So the resistance for that and the alternative movement regarding land policy and right to adequate housing must be also international and global. Thank you. Raquel, you have no idea how heartening it is to hear someone with your background and in your position and with your knowledge say what you've said. 
we, we are going through a couple of weeks and perhaps a couple of years where the extent to which people are thinking rationally about social problems seems to be uh, diminishing, where uh, both uh, public leaders and private citizens seem to be taking positions that have no, no thinking basis behind them at all. And to hear someone that, that can make a statement such about a proposed project, let, let, let I think about it. The statement, it has, uh, it has no, uh, it, to object to a project because it has no value as use, only as financial value. Can you conceive of anybody in the city government or the national government or in uh, the major political parties now criticizing a project because they have, because it has no use value, it has only financial value? On the contrary, the city is going for projects that have financial value and to hell with their use value. Uh, the idea that one would apply that criteria to what ought to be done in development in a city is mind-boggling. Mind suppose we looked at Atlantic Yards or the far west side development, or suppose we looked at public housing, or suppose we looked at the vacant units in, in empty condominium developments in New York and said, who could use these places, these developments the most? Instead of asking who can make the most money from them, it would be, it would be a radical ch change for us. And it's heartening to hear someone that, that raises the possibility. Um, I had uh, two questions in a, in a trailer that I wanted to raise with you and ask you for a global perspective on. The first one has to do, you spoke of adequate housing as a human right. And the, the two questions are, uh, what is adequate housing? Mm -hmm. And who wants it? Uh, and then I'll leave to David the question of how do we get it? Uh, <laughs> but the question of what is it? What is adequate housing? How do you define it? The state of the uh, federal government today and basically almost any governmental unit in the United States, uh, looks at very limited standards. There's a, uh, a measurement called worst case housing needs in the US, that I'm sure you know about, which looks at two things. The worst case housing needs are of people that pay more than 50% of their income for housing or have severely inadequate housing, what used to be called substandard housing, housing th that doesn't provide adequate shelter. And that comes out to some 5.9 million households, families, not, not individuals. Uh, that's a remarkably limited definition of who needs housing and what adequate housing is. For instance, it does not include, there are four million people in the United States, four million households in the United States that are in danger of losing their houses through mortgage foreclosure. Mm -hmm. You would think that would create a pretty bad case of housing need. Mm -hmm. How far do we go in defining adequate housing? And how, how do our conceptions of what uh, adequate housing is differ from what uh, prevails in other countries, or uh, what you might think would be a good standard for a right to housing. Uh, and uh, does that right go to issues other than simply affordability and physical quality, what worst case housing deals with? We've just had a, uh, two cases in which in New York City, there was major protest against the construction of a mosque uh, for the uh, Muslim community, uh, one in downtown Manhattan and one in Queens. Uh, in both cases, there, there are 